All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at these two little guys. I bought them from a seller on eBay who actually lives in a town in a former East Germany, and he advertised these as East German locks. I, I really don't know if they are. The keys are labeled BAB, and I've seen BAB locks before that are kind of shaped the same, but nowhere else on here is any marking other than right here on the top. So if any of you guys can confirm that that is, or, or maybe disprove that that is the BAB logo, I really have... No clue. Um, these are very, very old. These have probably been around since the, I would say the 50s or the 60s. Again, I'm just guessing. They've got a metal crinkle paint finish and underneath it looks like they have another layer of paint. So maybe they've been repainted at some point in their lives. Um, they are sequentially numbered 71 and 72, but those are hand stamps. So these were probably used in some factory or something, maybe lockers. I really don't have a clue. These are interesting because they're only four pinners, and they, both of them come with a whole bunch of keys. Um, they're interesting because they're key retaining, and it's a very simple mechanism when you can get it to work. It's very rough. The machining on these and the workmanship or craftsmanship is pretty pretty rough. Um, you know, they, they pounded a pin in to hold the shackle to keep it from popping out, and I thought that might have been an anomaly until I grabbed his brother and took a look at that one. and. They didn't spend a lot of time grinding that flat before they painted it. Um, the other thing is all the pins are held in by this little, looks like a little tin plate that was kind of hammered in there and pinched in place. So a lot of things to explore with these. Uh, they are key retaining, and here's how. When we get, if the key will work, there we go, it will turn, and now the key won't come out. You can't return it. Well, when we take a look here, on the top there's no cutout on this side, but there is a cutout on that side. So what I would suspect is that there's a mechanical lever inside of this main cylinder that rotates, and when it's lined up with that groove, there's enough clearance for the key to turn and remove, and when it's open, you can't turn it because of the shaft. So pretty cool, very simple mechanism. Let me see if I can get it to cooperate and lock for me again. They are, as I said, they are very, very rough. Uh, they are both four pinners. They're pinned or they're differently and very rough. Look at the bottom of that. You can see the machine marks in that core. I believe the core is aluminum. I really don't know. Not, not fancy, but purely functional. Let's see if we can get these guys big. We won't be needing those, I don't think. We will need a tensioner. And let's go ahead and use this guy. Uh, he's too big. All right, so that's 1.2 millimeter. Let me use the white one, which is one millimeter. And he's too small. So whatever it is, it's 1.1 millimeters is the size you want, but I just don't happen to have one. All right, let's try. It's a nice, wide open, wallowed out from 50 years of use keyway. 50 years of use on an aluminum core. I'm going to use this Attila. And let's see if we can get him. I'm going to try, let's try to bully him first. I'm going to apply some pretty good tension on him. Come on. Binder, where are you? Here we go. I can feel those pins just grinding, so it wouldn't surprise me in the least if the pins are made out of aluminum as well. No feedback. I, I doubt very seriously that there would be any kind of security pins in here. Check that first pin, nothing. It's tough because of the rustic fit and finish, I think. Here we go. It was pin number two, and we got an open. All right, there's the first one. That was number 72. Let's go 71. Here's what the pinning looks like on this guy. And this one's a little hard to get in. There we go. And there's an awful lot of play. If you take a look at that. Look at that slop built right into that key. It does work, though. Well, let's try to pick him. What I'd like to do is when we get done with this, guy, see if I can get him picked, and then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to explore how that mechanism works. I'm going to probably throw it on the milling machine and see what we got inside. Nice loud crunch. And there we go, pin number one. All right, so we know that these are key retaining, and there's no cutout on that side, so that lever turns in there. So let's figure out where the lever is before we start cutting. So let's go ahead and 
lock this guy back up. And then I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark the top of this, of the shackle. And then I'm going to find the right key, open them back up, and take a close look here. Notice that line is not a lot above, so that tells me it's barely below the body of this lock. The thickness of that top metal is probably about that much, so the lever literally is right there. And it's going to turn in, the, to, in order to lock it in the clockwise direction, so the lever is right here. So if I machine off a good chunk right in here, we should be able to see exactly how that locking mechanism works. Let me throw it on the milling machine, and uh, I got two tries, so let's see what happens. All right, this actually turned out better than I could have hoped. Um, on this side, you can see the recoil spring for the shackle, so it'll, so it'll shove the shackle out once we get it unlocked. But we're really interested in the locking mechanism, and right there it is. In the cutout, let me push down with my finger. I think you can see it just a little bit better. And, of course, the core. This is the Bible where all of the driver pins are. Of course, key pins are in there. And there's just a little pocket for that part of the shackle to fit inside of. Not a lot to it. So when I turn the shackle, notice how the, the actuator is off-center, so it will cam that to the left and out of the way. I'll rotate it a couple of times. So when I rotate it, you can see a couple of things here. You can see it rotating out of that groove and will allow the shackle to pop up. And also, there's a 90-degree limiter, and that would be this pin right here, so it keeps us from over-rotating the core, and it also keeps us from take, pulling the core straight out. And then, of course, our four uh, key pins. So when I release this, I'm going to have to pull it just a little bit because it's a little bit pinched. Now you can see when I try to lock it, I can't lock it because there's no cutout in the shackle on this side. So pretty simple mechanism. Very cool. One more thing I would like to check out. and Let me lock it back, and I'll show you. And that would be right here. Um, I'm going to try to... I'm going to get a screwdriver or something sharp and see if I can just pop that off. That would be a really easy way to defeat this lock. So let me find All right, guys, let's try it on the, the partner lock here. And the reason I say that is because I, when I machine this, I machine that away from it. It wouldn't be a fair evaluation. So I think this one's probably good. I'm going to use a normal, just a regular Swiss Army knife. And I'm just going to try to squeeze it into what I think is a wider part of the crack. So it probably would be right there. I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of the way here. Really don't want to lose one of those guys, at least not today. So I think that's pinched under there quite a ways. May not be reasonable attack. And then again, maybe it is. So we dump all that stuff out of there. Then we take the same knife, and if everything's gone, we should be able to rotate this. And we have an open. How easy was that? Well, there's everything that goes into a BAB padlock. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.